So I did say I wasn't going to put myself through all this again, but you know what? The latest Doctor Who B&M sets look pretty good, so let's go shopping! Can't see any of the new sets on the shelf. Bobblehead Daleks, of course. Got the 10th Doctor set there. And the 8th Doctor set from the previous wave. I've got both of these sets already. Oh, looks like they've got plenty of 10th Doctor sets left. Yeah. None of the new sets, though. That is frustrating. Ah, so day one of the quest has been unsuccessful. Just the Tenant and McGann sets on the shelf, but... I'm kind of not surprised actually because the new sets have literally only just started to find their way to stores so I'm going to come back in a couple of days and I'm also going to check the website because there is a chance these sets might be made available online. Yes you did hear me right, B&M are actually possibly going to make some of these sets available to buy online so I'm going to check the website, come back in a couple of days, see if I have better luck. So in this latest wave of Doctor Who B&M exclusives, we've got a Ninth Doctor set featuring the Ninth Doctor figure with a new head sculpt, the Disco Dancing Rose figure, which I never thought I'd see reissued, and a TARDIS Emergency hologram version of the Ninth Doctor. We've got a 13th Doctor collector set with the 13th Doctor in her blue coat, a Yaz figure, and a TV transmitted Weeping Angel figure. There's also a variant of this set where the angel has got a screaming face. We've got History of the Daleks 11, featuring two Daleks from Genesis of the Daleks, History of the Daleks set 12, featuring two Daleks from Destiny of the Daleks, and a set I'm most excited for, the Creation of the Daleks set, featuring Davros and Prototype Leader Dalek. And rounding off this wave of figures, we've got a First Doctor Electronic TARDIS set, featuring the First Doctor figure as portrayed by David Bradley, and an Electronic TARDIS which has light and sound. And as you all know, I do love a TARDIS set. So I'm just taking a look on B&M's website and I'm pleased to see they are actually listing the new sets on there. Uh, unfortunately, you can't purchase them at the minute. It's showing us in-store only or you can enter your email address to be alerted if they get the TARDIS set. So that's something. It's a step forward because you can already purchase the 8th and 10th Doctor set from them online. So hopefully it's only a matter of time before these become available as well. Do you know what's frustrating? I actually asked the member of staff who's putting some stock out whether I should pop back after lunch in case they had some out back. And he was like, nah, there's no Doctor Who sets out the back, mate, no. So I came home, I've just checked the Doctor Who merchandise guide site where people post when they spot the sets on the shelves and uh, turns out that my local store apparently had all the sets on the shelf as of 2.30 this afternoon. That's about 40 minutes after I left the store, which is really frustrated. So I'm going to try and go back tomorrow and uh, just hope that Leather Jacket Man hasn't been in and bought them all off the shelves. And so the following day, I jumped on a bus and back I went, hoping it wouldn't be a wasted journey and that there would at least be some of the sets left on the shelf. Oh, so what have we got? The 13th Doctor set. Yeah, oh, they've got the creation of the Dalek set. I don't believe it. Amazing. They've also got the Ninth Doctor set. That's cool. And oh my gosh, they've only got one of each Dalek set. I'm grabbing those. They've got both the Angel variants as well, but only one screaming one. So I'm grabbing that as well. Well, I'm in absolute shock. They had all the sets, apart from the TARDIS set, obviously. Only one of each Dalek set, only one variant of the Weeping Angel. And I can't help but think it's all about timing. I feel like if I'd just got there that little bit later, they would all have gone. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if they've already gone. Anyway, let's get these bad boys home. And here they are, and it's such a great feeling to actually get these all in one trip. It's so nice to walk into B&M and actually see the sets on the shelves. Such a great feeling. So I'm going to give you my overall thoughts on each set. I'm not going to open every set because of the nature of the new packaging. Once you open some of these, like the Dalit sets, you can't rebox them. Uh, I am going to open that one, however, and I am going to open the Davros set. So the ones that I'm going to put on display, I'm going to open. The rest, I'll just give you my overall thoughts on. So let's start with the creation of the Dalek set, because I've been dying to get my hands on that one. 
So the creation of the Dalek set, and when this latest wave of Doctor Who figures was first announced, this was the set I was most excited to get my hands on. And I was worried it'd be so popular and the scalpers would get them all that I wouldn't get one. So I'm really pleased I've managed to get it. I'm also pleased to see it's in a proper solid box with a protective window because uh, the latest history of the Dalek sets are in much flimsier, cheaper packaging, as you'll see later. So that's nice to see. Turning it round, there's a bit of blurb about the story itself. So if you want to read that, do pause now. And it says, includes Davros and Genesis Dalek with power pack accessories. So, without further ado, let's set Davros and the Dalek free. And here they are. And the figures themselves are actually quite easy to get out of the box for a change. So they do look good. But it's also nice to see this set comes with a nice backdrop as well. This is the area where Davros first tests out the Dalek. It's even got a target there for the Dalek to shoot at. So nice to see a backdrop for this set because the history of the Dalek sets no longer have backdrops, which I think is a bit of a shame. But the figures themselves really do look fantastic. So let's start with Davros. It's a great looking figure. There's some improvements in the paint apps on his face and the wiring around his head. We've got all the lovely switches and dials around his chair as well, which look really neat. I do love this clear back plate as well around his chair. The back piece of his seat is slightly skew if on mine. I think the headpiece there is slightly pushing it out, but it's not really a big deal. He does look really good. There's a bit of buffering around the chair as well well he's been moving around a bit of weathering but overall a fantastic figure of Davros just going to move him to the side for a second there so we can take a look at this gorgeous Dalek I absolutely love this the color of gray they've used the paint color is absolutely stunning just trying to catch that in the light so you can see it properly and of course it's much more screen accurate from previous releases we've had so great figure set the Dalek and Davros and both of these figures come with some little hidden features as well. So with Davros, if you push in the second spear up, oh, it flips off the side panel. And uh, yeah, you can see all the circuitry and wires inside there, which is a really nice little added feature. I love that. In terms of articulation, Davros doesn't really have much. It's mostly just in this arm. I guess you could do that impatient tapping finger thing he does if you wanted to. Uh, he's got wheels on the bottom so you can move around. Not much articulation at all in the head, it just about moves. But yeah, it's mainly the arms, so I guess you could put him in various different poses if you wanted to. So moving on to that gorgeous Dalek, and those of you that own Daleks will know they have articulation in their plunger and gun, and the head can move around, and obviously they've got wheels on the bottom to get around, but this one has something a little bit different, because you can actually take his plunger off, and his gun, and you can attach these little power banks to them, so you can basically make them look like they did in the story before they got attached. So you have to give them a little bit of a push in there. So you see, you attach that and you do the same with the plunger. Just pop that in till it clicks. And yes, you could, let's bring Davros in, have him holding the gun, for example, ready to attach it to the Dalek. And I just think that's such a nice, interesting feature. It's just something so different that I absolutely love that idea. So it's the set I was most excited for when this latest wave of figures was announced. And I have to say, the creation of the Dalek set hasn't disappointed. I love all the little add-ons and extra features. And I think, if anything, it's exceeded my expectations. I think it's an absolutely brilliant set. Next up, it's the Ninth Doctor set. Hey, up, an intriguing set, to say the least. Right, on the back, you get a bit of blurb. Do pause now if you want to read it. And it says, includes Ninth Doctor, Hologram Ninth Doctor and Rose Tyler. So here they are, I've set them free from their box, but not from their ties, because I'm not currently going to be displaying these on the shelf. I haven't got room for them on there at the minute. But let's start by taking a look at this new improved sculpt of the Ninth Doctor's face. And do you know what? I have to say that is a vast improvement, actually, on the original release. That really does look a lot better. I can definitely see more Eccleston in there and love the weathering on the jacket and his trousers look good. So, yeah, hats off. That's actually a really nice figure of the Ninth Doctor. Moving on to Disco Dancing Rose. Now, this is an odd one, isn't it? I can't believe they've still got this sculpt because we often hear Al Dua talking about how they've lost various sculpts over the years. How this one has survived, I don't know, but I'm kind of glad it has. I mean, the weird pose is due to the fact that originally the figure was going to be a static figure with no articulation, I believe, and then they decided to give it articulation, hence the weird pose she's in. But the paint apps on it are hugely improved. I'll give it that. It actually looks quite nice. It's one of those figures that, even though it's a bit bad, I kind of love it. I've grown to love it over the years. So there is something I like about it. It's kind of iconic in a way. And yeah, 
definitely improved by the new paint apps. The holographic knife doctor figure. Now, that looks like the original head sculpt to me. If you compare the two, yeah, you can definitely see an improvement, but I guess it works well enough for the holographic figure. Uh, from one of my all-time favorite two-parters, I love the holographic scene in uh, Bad Wolf Parting of the Ways. It always reduces me to tears every time I watch it. I love the bit when he turns and talks to Rose. Uh, so yeah, it's nice to have a figure of it. I do find these see-through figures a bit odd, the fact you can see all the joints and stuff through them, but that's just the nature of them. And as I said, as it's from one of my favorite episodes, it's nice to have a figure of it. So yeah, it's a bit of an odd set, this one. Um, I like it more than I thought I would, to be honest. Right, let's move on to the history of the Dalek sets. I love collecting these sets, um, but I am disappointed by this new packaging where uh, if I wanted to take these figures out, uh, you've basically got to rip the plastic off there and completely ruin the box and you won't be able to put them back in the box because the reason is I've got so many Daleks on display, I kind of pick out the ones that I don't have. And um, although I haven't got these exact Daleks, I have got ones that look like them. And hence why I won't be putting these bad boys on display, even though they look fantastic. Uh, just showing you the box before I go into a little bit more detail on those. There's the back. Again, do pause if you want to read it. And it says Daleks from Classic Doctor Who Adventure, Genesis of the Daleks, set two from 1975. So yeah, um, at first look, at first glance, these Daleks look like they are the same, but they are slightly different. Um, this one, I think, has different lights on his dome compared to the other one. Hopefully you can see that. One of them's got a little round dish in the middle and the other one hasn't. So there are little tiny differences. I think the ball on the bottom of the plunger is black on that one and silver on the other. So there's tiny little differences, but the main thing that people are gonna love about this set is the fact that they are much more screen accurate. The dark gray paint that they've used for these figures uh, is a lot better, looks a lot more like what we see on screen. In fact, it's almost exactly what we've seen on screen. So although they're gonna stay boxed and it is a lovely set, um, I don't like the new packaging. I don't like the fact that I can't open it to show you without ruining the packaging. And um, they're gonna stay boxed for now, I'm afraid, even though they are lovely Daleks. Next up, it's History of the Daleks set 12, featuring two Daleks from Destiny of the Daleks. Now, I am going to be taking these out of the box in a minute because I don't have any Daleks on display this colour or that even look like them. Before we do that, though, let's take a look at the back of the box. There's the blurb, so do pause now if you want to read it. it says, Daleks from the classic Doctor Who adventure, Destiny of the Daleks from 1979. Right, it's going to pain me to do so, but let's set them free. Right, oh God, the new packaging feels so flimsy. So having cut off all the sellotape, I now need to get them out of this plastic thing. And this is the bit I don't like doing. Ugh. Right, managed to get them both out. As you can see, the packaging uh, kind of ruined. And it's a shame that the previous History of the Dalek sets had nice backdrops featuring pictures from the stories they were from. Whereas this one, the latest ones, they've just got this generic, boring white backdrop and that horrible thing keeping the Daleks in. Anyway. They're finally out of the packaging, so let's have a look at them. So here they are, two Daleks from Destiny of the Daleks, and I do like that shade of grey. Like the previous set, on first glance, they do look identical, but there are a couple of subtle little differences, like the base on this one has a silver rim at the top of it, which, to be honest, I don't remember in the story, but uh, maybe one of them had that. Uh, this one, he's got his little black dish in the middle, and that one doesn't have it. The ball joint on the gun is a different colour on that one. And also the lights on the Dalek Dome are slightly different as well. So a couple of nice little differences between the two. I would have loved it if they'd have added uh, the little red and yellow bombs around at least one of them. Uh, they did release a figure of that many years ago, which I never managed to get my hands on. And that would have really made him stand out. But overall, two nice Dalek figures. Uh, I do notice that the uh, little dot in the middle of the Dalek on that one is perfect, where on this one, it's been painted on slightly to the left there, which makes him look a bit shifty, but otherwise two really nice figures. Uh, Destiny of the Daleks as a story, uh, I do like it. I don't think it's one of the best Dalek stories, but it's certainly very watchable. And uh, I'm looking forward to putting these two Daleks on the shelf along with the rest of them. Alrighty then, moving on to the 13th Doctor set. And as you saw, I got both variants of this. So I've got the Serene Weeping Angel as well as the Screaming Weeping Angel. On the back of the box, 
there's a bit of blurb about the 13th Doctor, so do pause now if you want to read it. And it says this set includes Weeping Angel, Transparent, 13th Doctor in Flux Outfit, and Yaz. And here they are, just a boring white backdrop for these ones. So let's start with the 13th Doctor figure, because obviously this is just a repaint. It's not a new sculpt or anything, but I don't think there's any need for one, really, because it's a good likeness to Jodie and it's a nice figure. And I do really like the blue coat. I think it's an easy variant for them to do. And uh, I wish we'd seen more of her in that blue coat. So, yeah, it's a nice variant figure to have. And as I said, good likeness to Jody. Moving on to Yaz. Now, this has got a new head sculpt. So I'm surprised at this because uh, we always hear them saying a character that they can't afford new sculpts and they have to make these figures out of, you know, various body parts from other figures. I think this one was originally a primeval body part. Uh, so yeah, to, to actually get a new head sculpt for Yaz is interesting. I didn't think there was anything wrong with the previous head sculpt, to be honest, but this one's got a ponytail. Uh, it does look decent. It's a nice figure. I think this is the outfit she wears in Eve of the Daleks, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, so two good variants there of previous figures. And then the Weeping Angel, the transparent one, uh, as we saw in Flux. And I have to say, you know, I did say that these transparent figures can look a bit odd, but this one... I think looks really, really good. I love the details on the wings and the color of it. And I think even though I'm currently leaving these figures tied up for now, because uh, I'm not going to put them on display, I haven't got room for that. At some point, when I do change my figures around and put some on display, I'm definitely going to put this figure on there because I think it looks great. And so let's take a look at the screaming face variant of this Weeping Angel. And I think when I put this on display, this will be the one that goes on the shelf. I really, really like that. And I think this is the variant that most people are gonna to wanna to get their hands on. It looks fantastic. So overall, it's a nice set. I like the Doctor in a dark coat. Yaz has got a new face. And we've got two very nice Weeping Angel variants. And so having got these sets in the bag, all I need now is a first Doctor TARDIS set to complete this latest wave of figures. And so over the next couple of weeks, I went back and forth to the three B&M stores closest to me, but the TARDIS set was nowhere to be seen. According to the merchandise map, none of them seemed to be making their way down south, which was very frustrating. Thank goodness then for my friend Callum MacArthur, who managed to find one in a B&M store in Scotland. He very kindly bought it for me and sent it to me in the post. So here it is, the first Doctor electronic TARDIS set featuring electronic light and sound, limited edition. So it tells us, featuring the first Doctor as played by David Bradley. And I do like the look of the set, actually. It looks pretty good. Um, the only thing I would say is I don't like this packaging. The fact there's no protection there for the TARDIS or the figure themselves. It's very much open to the elements, which is a shame. It does make it feel a bit cheap, but it's a shame, actually, because the box itself actually feels quite sturdy. On the back of the box, we get a write-up about the first Doctor and TARDIS set. So do pause now if you want to read it. But let's set old Bradders free. There we go, and oh gosh, what is all this? There's screws on the bottom as well. Gosh, TARDIS sets are never easy to get out. I have to get a screwdriver. Oh, I don't like having scissors so close to the TARDIS. Honestly, it's turning into a bit of a nightmare to get this TARDIS out. You've got to completely wreck the packaging. So if you're the kind of person that likes to keep your things boxed, or if you like to rebox them after you've opened them, I think this one could look a bit messy afterwards. Right. <laughs> Managed to get the Bradley figure free. Now for the TARDIS. Hurrah! I think we've managed to get it out. There we go. So it seems crazy to me. They didn't put any protection around the actual box, but they put all this stuff inside to keep the TARDIS and the figures protected. Anyway, there it is. Just need to get these horrible things off now. Well, that was a bit of a mission, but I finally managed to get them out. And actually, my first impressions of this set is it looks really, really nice, actually. So let's start by taking a look at the first Doctor figure. And I think there's enough likeness there for this to be either Hartnell or David Bradley, to be honest. But I guess you're just going to look at it that it's a first Doctor figure. But it's a good head sculpt. I like it. Love the hat. Love the long flowing scarf, which goes down the back as well. And his nice checkered trousers. So yeah, whether you want it to be Hartnell's Doctor or Bradley's Doctor, or just the first Doctor. It's a really nice figure of him. 
And so moving on to the TARDIS and I absolutely love it. And some of the photos I've seen of this really haven't done it justice. A lot of the pictures I've seen on Facebook and Twitter make it look very plasticky, but in hand, and I hope it comes across on screen, it looks beautiful. I love the color of the blue that they've used on it. It's got the black base, which I'm not the biggest fan of, I have to be honest, but it kind of suits it. But yes, the overall weathering and colour of this TARDIS looks lovely. Obviously, uh, they're no longer allowed to use the St John's Ambulance badge, so it's kind of half missing there. Uh, but it's got some nice weathering texture to it. And the only thing I would say, the only criticism really, is that I think it's a shame that they now use stickers for the police box signs around the top there, because I just worry that over time, uh, they might peel off or start to peel off. And I guess it's a money saving thing, a budget thing. because obviously these are made on a budget for B&M, but I think it's nicer when they're actually printed on like they have been on some of the previous TARDIS sets. But it's a beautiful TARDIS. I love the big lamp on the top as well. It really does look lovely in hand. And of course, it does have light and sound. So we've got the speaker on the back. Just need to get the screwdriver back and put some batteries in it. And just so you know, this set requires three AAA batteries and I've had to steal mine out of the TV remote. So let's get them in and see what it sounds like. So the batteries are in, just need to flip the switch on the base to on and let's see how many sound effects it's got. I like that the lamp keeps flashing after takeoff. And again, the lamp continues to flash after the sound effects have stopped, which is nice. As well as the nice sound effects, you can, of course, open the doors, although there's nothing really to see in there, but some of you might want to print off your own backdrop to put in it, or you might want to just stick your first Doctor figure in there as if he's coming out the TARDIS. So we may have had a few TARDIS sets released over the years, but I think this is actually one of my favourite ones they've done. I really do love it. To be honest though, I wish Character had made this an online exclusive available through their website rather than giving it to B&M because even though B&M have put some of these up for sale on their website, I know they've still been really hard to get hold of. So I'm very grateful to my friend Callum for getting me this. I think without him, I would have missed out on this set and that would have been a shame because I absolutely love it. So there you have it, with a touch of luck and a bit of help from my friend Callum, I've managed to get all the latest Doctor Who sets from B&M and I have to say, they really do look fantastic. So there we are, another BN Quest done and dusted. And it's 2023 now, so I wonder what sets will get released this year. Hopefully something exciting for the 60th anniversary. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed coming on this quest with me. If you did, do check out The Geek's Handbag on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And don't forget, I also do a weekly Doctor Who podcast with Gary that goes to every Friday called The Big Blue Box Podcast. So do give that a listen. But until the next time, take care of yourselves. Bye bye. Bye.